Are you struggling with high HbA1c? What if I told you there was a secret hack that nobody talks about to bring your A1c down really fast? My favorite hack which helped me reduce my A1c dramatically. Coming up in this video. Let's go! Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom, I've been type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. Billions of diabetics visit their doctors every three months to find out that their HbA1c is too high. And because you are watching this video, you are probably one of them. You can think of A1c as your average blood sugar levels for the last two to three months. A high HbA1c means that your blood sugars have been too high. And that means that you're more likely to develop diabetes complications, like serious problems with your eyes and feet. So what is the powerful hack you can start using right now which will help you reduce your HbA1c test results fast? You are told that you should stay physically active and take more insulin to keep your blood sugars under control. You are told to count carbs and take insulin dosage based on your insulin to carb ratio. But you are still struggling because to get everything right is extremely difficult. What helped me to reduce my HbA1c under 6% was finding the right amount of insulin to take and the right time when to take this insulin. You think that you already know this? Wait a minute and think about it. You need the right amount of insulin at the right time. Now let me show you why this is so powerful. Imagine your blood sugar trend during each day is like a rope. Carbohydrates that you eat and stress that you have are pulling this rope up and your blood sugar is rising. We all know these blood sugar spikes after a carby meal. Insulin and physical activity are fighting with the carbohydrates and they are pulling the rope down. After you take insulin, your blood sugar starts dropping if you don't eat. And you want the carbs and insulin to take on this fight every time. And you don't want anyone to win. Now if you want your HbA1c under 6%, you need to be really good at keeping your rope from spiking. And this is not easy, especially if you eat meals with carbohydrates. Every diabetes educator tells you that you need to count carbs and helps you find your carb to insulin ratio. You then count carbs and use this carb to insulin ratio to decide how many units of insulin you need to take with each meal. But remember, you not only need to know the right amount of insulin, you also need to know the right time when to take it. And not every diabetes educator explains to you how exactly you can do this. Imagine your pre-meal blood sugar is 100 and you are stable. If you take rapid acting insulin and you start eating right away, the carbs usually start working much faster and develop momentum and start pulling your rope higher. Rapid acting insulin usually takes 15 to 30 minutes to develop this momentum and by that time you probably spiked too much from the carbs that you've eaten at the same time when you took the insulin. If you bolus right before you start eating, the insulin will have to fight with the carbs at much higher blood sugar levels, maybe at 200s, maybe at 250s and only after that your blood sugar might start coming down and that's not what you want. If your goal is lower A1c, you want to have this fight between insulin and carbs at much lower levels, ideally somewhere between 100 and 150. To do that, you need to pre-bolus. What does this mean? Pre-bolusing means that you take the insulin within a set time frame before you start eating. And you want to find out what exactly this time frame is. Remember, right amount at the right time. You think you already know everything about pre bolusing and you've mastered it? Do you really? I have more to share. The right time always depends on specific person, specific situation and specific site to which you apply the insulin. You cannot go wrong by pre bolusing 10 to 20 minutes before you eat, but you should always observe what your body does and consult with your doctor whenever necessary. Remember, I'm not a medical professional and I don't provide any medical advice here. I'm just sharing my experience and I want to show you what worked for me. Now let me show you how exactly I eliminated most of my post-meal spikes. I started really focusing on pre-bolusing. And I started with meals that I eat very often. For example, almost every morning before I go to work, I eat a yogurt. 
So this is a perfect opportunity to master the pre-bolusing because the situation is exactly the same every day and I can practice and see the results on this specific pre-bolus for this specific piece of meal, which is the yogurt. And I did this in two steps. Step one was to count carbs in the yogurt to find out how many units of insulin I need to take with the yogurt. And step two was finding the right time when to take this pre-bolus. When I did it for the first time with this yogurt, I pre 15 minutes before I ate. And then I observed what the blood sugar is doing. 30 minutes after the yogurt, 60 minutes after the yogurt, 90 minutes, 2 hours, 3 hours after meal. If your blood sugar spikes too much and then comes back down, it means you took the right amount of insulin, but you bolused too late. So what you want to do next time, you want to pre bolus a little bit earlier. And you want to observe again. A little bit earlier and observe. On the other hand, if your blood sugar drops after the meal and then comes back up, it means that you pre bolus too early. In that case, you want to move uh, the pre bolus to a little bit later time. And you want to play with it a little bit earlier, a little bit later. One day you will find the perfect sweet spot for your bolus and your blood sugar after the meal will not change at all. You can use a timer on your phone to practice this. And if something doesn't go right, don't look at it as you made a mistake. Look at it as a learning experience on your way to finding the right amount of insulin and the right time when to take it. Now think about how powerful it is. Once you found this perfect balance with one meal, you will find it with next and next. And there is not so many meals that people eat regularly. For me, it is usually between 15 to 20 meals that I repeatedly eat all over again. And if I master 15 to 20 meals and pre bolusing for them, I basically master 80% of my diabetes life. And that's a lot. If you do this before you know it, your HbA1c results will be so much better. Now there is no universal advice what exactly should be your pre bolus time. You need to find out for yourself. Remember, slow-acting carbs don't need so much of the pre bolus as fast-acting carbs. But with each meal that you eat, you can be sure there will be a fight between carbs and insulin, and you want to throw the first punch. You want to pre bolus and you want this insulin to develop momentum before the carbs start working 100%. And that way, this fight between carbs and insulin will happen within your target range and not way above it, which is what we don't want. If you have a CGM, it is much easier to find the balance because you see what the blood sugar is doing 24-7. Pay attention to arrows because they indicate if your blood sugar is rising or dropping and they also show you the rate of the change, so how fast it is rising and how fast it is dropping. Your goal is to keep the arrow stable as much as you can. If you see diagonal up or diagonal down, you definitely miscalculated the bolus or took the bolus at the wrong time. When you are trying to find the balance, the direction and the speed is more important than the actual number. A lot of times it is not possible to pre-bolus for practical reasons or because the life just happens. Sometimes you don't have time to wait 15 to 20 minutes and you just want to eat right away. And that's okay. If that's the case, you should generally go for a low carb meal or meal with carbs that are slow acting and they will not spike your blood sugar so much and the insulin will be able to keep up. There is a little trick you can do if you have an insulin pump because in the insulin pump you also have basal rate and the basal is exactly the same insulin as you use for bolus. So when I don't have time to pre bolus I do this with my insulin pump. Let's say I have a basal rate of one unit per hour and I know that the meal I'm going to eat is exactly five units. In that case, because I cannot pre bolus I will take six or even seven units of insulin instead of five as a bolus. What I do next, I suspend the basal rate for the next one or two hours, depending how much more insulin I took as a bolus, to balance the amount of insulin. So within the two hours, within the next two hours, my combined basal and bolus rate will be the same, but because I pre bolus seven units, I will actually reduce the spike after the meal in the blood sugar. 
Some people call this a super bolus. Some people call this trading basal for bolus. Whatever you want to call it, this is a pretty efficient way with insulin pump how you can fake the pre bolus and you don't have to wait before you eat. Guys, if you want to learn more tips how to lower your A1C, click on the video on the screen right now. Remember, I'm not a medical professional, this is not a medical advice, just sharing my experience for your fun and entertainment. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next Type 1 Talks video. Ciao!